What's up, Active Lifers? Welcome back to the Active Life Podcast. I'm Dr. Sean Pastuge. I'm your host. Today's guest is Clarissa Whitcomb. Clarissa has been a one-on-one client of Larry Geyer right here at HQ for a little bit over a year now. And today we are going to talk about how that training has changed her life, not only physically, but socially, emotionally, and how that's permeated into the other people who are important to her. I think you're going to get a lot of value out of this podcast. I believe this is going to be one of the ones that you send to your friend who you've been telling over and over and over again that they need to take this action to change their lives. I hope you're ready for it. It's a big one. You're really going to love it. Remember, when you do, when you send it to your friend, head to wherever you're listening to podcasts, leave us a review. Let's get to the show. Clarissa Whitcomb, welcome to the Active Life Podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. I I really like doing these kinds of shows. When I say these kinds of shows, I mean the shows with people who have had the experience of of working with people in active life and had something that they expected in one end and got something totally more than they expected on the way out, even if you're not on the way out, meaning once they're in the experience. And you being local, you being articulate, you being smart, and you having a legitimate problem that you came in with makes you someone I'm really excited to interview. I love that. And I love that you see that in me because it just has brought up so many insightful and kind of thought-provoking feelings for me. What has? Um, Just the awareness that you brought to me just by asking me to be on the podcast. What's the awareness that that brought to you? It makes me feel like... You know, I look at Active Life and Larry as super valuable in my life over the past year Um, in many ways that we'll go into, you know, Active Life and Larry has changed my life. But it also is like a great reminder to me of one of the best lessons that Larry has taught me is that I am valuable. And you asking me to be on this podcast, it makes me realize even more so that I'm valuable. And I also want to spread the same knowledge and what I've experienced with active life to people like me who don't even, who may not even know that they would really benefit from working with active life. How did Larry help you believe that you were valuable? You know, it was kind of like a snowball effect. It didn't happen at once. I came in um, kind of like I was plugged into an electrical socket I was so scattered and didn't know, we didn't know where, I don't, I don't think either of us knew where to begin, or at least I didn't. You're talking about your first session? My first session. Yeah. Um, and over the course of time through, I think it was really how he's taught me to talk to myself, like self-love and language, whether or not he realized he was doing it in that moment through our conversations during our training sessions or, you know, the movements and the breath work that we've worked on. Um, He's taught me that the way that you talk to yourself is a direct correlation to your actions, your body language, and how you treat yourself um, and how you just move about every day. Do you remember a time when he said something like about your language that you're using about yourself that you think maybe he realized it, maybe he didn't realize it? Yeah, definitely when I say, I would say things like, this is bad. Or, um, I can't, I can't was big for me. Like, I can't do this. I can't leave my job. Or I would just come in not even knowing how to express it and just welling up in tears and in pain. And before we would get into our session and move around, he would take a breath and be like, okay, let's put this all on the whiteboard and go through, you know, why you're feeling this way, load versus capacity. I mean, there are so many different elements I can think of, um, that really led me to look at myself and have just a greater self-awareness. That's cool. Yeah. Let's go back in time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> before you work, before you decided to work with Larry, if I'm not mistaken, there was another opportunity and you decided not to work with Larry. Yeah. Is that true? Mm-hmm. When was that? And why did you decide not to that time? Um, I think that was like three or four years ago. Oh my gosh. Has it been that long? Three or four years ago, or maybe it was close to five. I'm not sure. Um, and I decided at the time because I thought I could manage and go at certain things on my own. And the big factor 
honestly at the time was price Mm -hmm. because I was at a point in my life where we were trying to save up for our next investment house, whatever it may be. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to continue to work out with, you know, you're a regular like personal trainer. I can do this. Like I'll be fine. So you were working with a personal trainer at the I, time, and you were considering what you would consider an upgrade to Larry, and you decided as a not coach. To? Yes, mm-hmm. I decided not to. You know, I was working um, with Dr. Jeremy mm-hmm. at Vatra Spine, and he, Dr. Jeremy kind of. We were at a position where I was coming out of um, dealing with a lot of pain, and Dr. Jeremy was like, "Listen, I really think that this person would be valuable to you as your next step." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Okay." And then, you know, listen to Larry, we really connected. But at the time, I don't think I saw it as an investment in myself. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was hyper-focused on that. And I don't think the change that needed to happen last year, what needed to happen at that exact time. It wasn't pushing me over the edge yet, if that makes sense. Yeah. One of the things things that we talk about a lot is even the people who come to us and are looking to get out of pain, Mm -hmm. that's not why they come to us. They don't come to us because their back hurts. They don't come to us because their knee hurts. They don't come to us because their shoulder hurts. Nobody comes for that reason. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I believe that is when we ask anybody, did this pain start today? The answer is no. Did this pain start yesterday? The answer is no. Two weeks? No. A month? No. Usually it's, I've been dealing with this for a substantial amount of time and Now I'm just worried that I'm going to be stuck this way. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation becomes, what do you mean stuck this way? And, and it's, it all boils down to, I'm not here because I'm in pain. I'm here because I'm afraid of losing an element of who I am Mm -hmm. to this pain. Yeah. And that's what they come to reclaim. Yeah. It was the, honestly, for lack of a better word, lack of freedom for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like I was in this structured box and I had, I didn't even know I needed what I needed at the time. What kind of freedom? Um, physical freedom in a way. Have you um, heard us say physical freedom? I've heard Larry say it. Okay. That's a, that's a con, but I didn't understand what that concept was at the time. Mm-hmm. I was in pain and going through the same movements at the gym all the time and having the same results like yo-yoing in pain Um, my physique goals were not there. I wasn't focused on nutrition. I also didn't understand everything that you guys taught in terms of like sleep diet stress, Mm -hmm. but I felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over again. And for what reason? Well, were you doing those things because you knew that you could do them without getting hurt? Yes. I was like, I I don't know how to do other things. Right. So your thought was I'm safe if I stay in this box. I'm safe if I don't run even though I miss it. And it was frustrating and like broke my heart that I couldn't do these things Mm -hmm. Um, that I couldn't do like super intense uphill hikes. I would have trouble going downhill because my back would hurt or my hip would hurt. Um, Yeah. And you were working with a trainer at the time. I was, I was working with a trainer and full disclosure. It was a friend. Mm -hmm. Um, And though that person taught me a lot, um, it really was the push for me to find and really contact a coach like Larry. Well, there's a, there's a benefit to both, right? Like, so, Mm -hmm. so the person who maybe your friend is perfect to help, maybe wouldn't be exciting for Larry to work with. Mm -hmm. And, and that's good. It's good that there is room for both of those people in the same ecosystem because the, the, clients of that ecosystem, you, and then everybody else who belongs to a gym or wants to, you have different needs. And I think that you're best served when the person you're working with specializes in the needs that you have. Yeah. And I think that was the issue. We kind of hit a wall and at a point, Mm -hmm. um, and again, I was hurting the same, I was in pain more often, Mm -hmm. um, and doing things like I was able to deadlift my body weight and, you know, hit all of these PRs and it just, for some reason made me more frustrated and depressed because yes, I would have these great PRs and whatever and feel good about them. But then I was in so much pain. Right. So you're wondering, I have all of this physical capacity, but I'm still dealing with the number one problem that I've had for years. Why isn't this physical capacity eliminating this problem? Right. Going back and forth to physical therapy, orthopedics, you know, the same conversations, um, just kept happening. What were some of the recommendations that you got from physical therapy and orthopedics? 
Um, it was for my lower back particular, you know, it was a lot of different like SI joint stretches, therapies, um, man, like, uh, massage therapy was huge acupuncture. I mean, I was using every resource under the sun, Mm -hmm. um, for pain. I was taking, um, a really strong dose of Motrin kind of frequently. Um, I would even, you know, experiment with like, which has other benefits, CBD and like microdosing THC because anything to just take the pain away. Right. And like sleep better. Um, and then the other thing for at orthopedic offices were like injections, like cortisone injections. Did you get those? I did get them for my hip years ago. Okay. My bursitis. Um, I think when I was in college or high school. Well, the interesting about the interesting thing about shots like that is they have a benefit Mm -hmm. and the intended benefit, generally speaking, there's obviously specific use cases that are outside of the room of what I'm going to describe is this person needs a form of rehab that would be too painful to do given the inflammation they have in the joint right now. Mm -hmm. So let's give them this steroid injection, cortisone, for example, that is going to reduce the inflammation that they have momentarily, three months, six months. And in that three to six month window, let's have them do the rehab that would otherwise be impossible for them to do. Mm -hmm. The goal is to not need a second cortisone shot. Yeah. Often what happens, unfortunately, is a person gets a cortisone shot. They feel better because the inflammation is reduced. And so they they discontinue the pursuit of eliminating the thing that caused the pain in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then three to six months later, they need another cortisone shot and then another cortisone shot. And eventually it ends up being a surgical case or they resign themselves to the box you were describing before. Right. In my case, um, exactly as you described. And I just stopped running. I eliminated Mm -hmm. it completely. Right. Mm -hmm. When you came to Larry, what did you come to Larry asking for? In other words, you show up and you're like, hi, I'm Clarissa Whitcomb and I need help with. That's such an interesting question. We, I just remember our conversation had so many different elements to it, but I remember saying, I want to be stronger. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'm, I have low back pain and hip pain. And there was another element of physique goals, right? Like, I would like to feel better about myself, you know, on the surface. I would like to look in the mirror and like feel, com- feel more confident. Mm-hmm. I would like to be stronger. Um, and I remember Larry saying, this is going to be nothing like what you're expecting, but if you trust me and you know, since that moment, it's been nothing but short of incredible. Uh, nothing like what you expected, but if you trust me, what? <sighs> I don't remember the exact, but I do remember him saying, especially when he had my, the call with my husband too, we were both on the call and he said like, this is going to be nothing like you've ever experienced in the past, but something about, you know, trusting him. Mm -hmm. And when you say your husband was on the call, this was to help you decide that you should do this. Yes. It was an investment for both of us. Right. Yeah. Um, Because my husband too was on the same page that like you're fully capable and even said to Larry, like, you'll be surprised. She's athletic, but there's a blockage somewhere. Mm -hmm. Why was it important that your husband get on the call before you enrolled with Larry? Um, I'll take you back to the, so the first conversation was just solely between Larry and I over the phone. Mm -hmm. Then the second follow up call was a video call with Matt and myself, because I think Larry's language was, um, he really wanted everyone in the family to be involved in this because it really is an investment that'll benefit myself and my husband. And I think he wanted to see how Matt felt about it too, to be totally transparent. When he said that to you, do you, re- do you remember that, that call? Yes. You're smiling. Did you, how did that make you feel? I imagine it can go one of several ways. The two polar different ways would be, why can't I just make this decision for myself? Why doesn't he just trust me to know what I want? And the other way is, wow, that's really cool. He's involving my whole family. And then everything in, in the middle is possible. I went immediately towards, um, this is really cool. He's, he's involving my other half, Mm -hmm. you know, because I wasn't sure if he did that, you know, that was, you know, one of his principles for everybody, or if he kind of, maybe he got the sense in my conversation with him that 
my husband is, you know, my other half and he would be essential and really valuable if, if we really had a conversation with the three of us and we're transparent. Well, I think one of the things that Larry understands very well is that a leading indicator of success in anything is support or lack thereof from the people you see most often, right? If you went home every day and you saw Matt and, and you were like, Oh, I had the best workout. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Like, when are you going to be done with that? It would, it would become a, my relationship is suffering because of this. I need to figure something out here. Yeah. And you just brought up a good point. You know, Matt is always pushing me to be the the best version of myself that I would want to be. Um, and I believe Larry is the same way. And, the, to, to have the two of them have a conversation with me involved was really valuable. When you first considered working with Larry, I, I know where his pricing was then. I know where his pricing is now, right? He's, he's at least 50% more expensive now than he was when he last spoke with you. Mm-hmm. How did you get over the price the second time around, given that the price was the number one thing that held you back the first time around? Um, Honestly, because it had been a few years, I had still been working with the same person and I now understood more the value Mm -hmm. um, is just really, it may, let me put it this way. It made more sense to me to spend the money as an investment and really learn from someone who I thought could make a true difference in my life rather than just go back and forth on you know, nutrition plans, you know, different health coaches, personal trainers, and spend that money there. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So as you say that, there are people listening to this right now, not right now as we record it, but right now as they listen, um, who were in the boat that you were in the first time. Mm -hmm. What are questions that if you could go back in time, you would ask Clarissa Whitcomb to ask Larry or to ask yourself, or to ask your husband, or to ask the internet, so that you could gain the clarity of the value that would have been offered to you four years ago? That's really interesting. Um, can you ask that in a different way? Yeah. There's somebody out there right now <laughs> yeah. who is thinking about working with active life, or with a person who they believe may be able to help them in a way that they haven't been helped before, Mm -hmm. whether they're associated with us or not. Right now, they're looking at the price and saying, I don't know if this is worth it. What do they need to know to decide if it will be worth it? They need to know... I think first and foremost kind of what you brought up at the very beginning of our conversation that I went into this expecting physique, you know, body composition, what have you strength. Mm -hmm. And it's changed my entire life because it's not just movement training, it's mentorship, knowledge and education. Like I've never received before. Mm -hmm. So the value just, far exceeds anything else that I've ever experienced just from the education standpoint alone. How can somebody know? I definitely want to dive into that. That's going to be a big part of what we talk about next. If Larry had said to you then, or even now when you enroll, listen, this is going to change your whole life. It's going to change the friends that you have. It's going to change the job that you have. It's going to change the house in which you live. It's going to change all of that. It's going to change the way that you look at yourself in the mirror before your body even changes. Mm -hmm you probably would have been like, you're crazy. And I might do this anyway, but you're crazy. How does the person at home right now who's thinking about like, there's so much going on in my life. If I could just look different, if I could just get rid of this back pain, uh, it would, it would, it would solve so much for me. And then I'll figure out the rest afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking about signing up with somebody who they think could do that for them, but they're debating the price. It's painful to pay for. What would you tell them? I would tell them like I did to try, if this is a true priority for you, because it will change the foundation of everything for you. Um, 
sh- try and shift some things around. So if price is really a pain point, it becomes a little bit easier. Because I understand when people say, like, I have bills, I can't afford it, this, that. You know, I was lucky enough where we did have, we were able to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But we also did it, and we didn't do it four years ago because I was at a point in my life where, like, my well-being kind of depended on this mm-hmm. in a way. Were you with your husband four years ago? Yes, we've been together for 10 years. Did you Do you remember having the discussion with him about maybe working with Larry four years ago? Yeah. How did that go? He was really supportive. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, first and foremost, yes, it was price, but second, it was really also kind of actually the same level as price. I didn't think or I wasn't aware of at the time that I really needed it. I wish I had worked with Active Life three years ago. Well, so this is, this is what I want to help people understand. Yeah. How do they... You weren't sure you needed it. Mm -hmm. What do you wish you knew then that you know now? Um, I wish I understood. That fitness really. And just not, I don't know if I want to use the word personal training. That's our Should really be. Yeah. We struggle with the same thing. We want to avoid associating with something that everyone has a clear understanding of what they think it is. Right. That we view ourselves as so different then. I wish I understood. I'm not sure if functional fitness is the right term. It's not. Okay. (laughs) I wish that I wish I understood fitness more in relation to how in relation to my life, Mm -hmm. like making things easier in my life. And, you know, like carrying groceries, not having pain going upstairs. Um, I wish I had thoroughly researched that before continuing on with the same exercises just to hit a certain physique goal. Yeah. So I have a, I have a, and I hope that's making it, it's, it's hard for me to put into words what you're asking. Yeah. yeah. It's a hard question. It's the one that I have to figure out how to best answer Mm -hmm. and then speak to publicly. It's why I ask the question, Mm uh, and you spoke to earlier confirming your value by being asked to come on the show. When you're here and I'm working through something, you're one of the most valuable people for me to ask questions of Mm -hmm. because you think about the answer. You're able to apply it to your own experiences. And when you provide an answer, it's, it's one that I'm, I'm sure that you've thought through because sometimes you say, I don't know. I have to think about that. Mm -hmm. And it's really helpful. So, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is if you had trust that working with Larry or anybody would give you, would give you back the practical elements of your lives that you would like to just take for granted Mm -hmm. that like, it was nice to be able to take for granted. I'm just going to go for a run. I'm just going to carry my groceries up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Those are things that when lost become very expensive emotionally to lose. And So to have the conversation with whoever it is you're looking to work with about, look, I, I want to get back a practical level of health and fitness. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for you to make me the strongest woman in Long Beach. I don't need you to make me a bikini model, right? Sure. Both of those things would be really cool if they happened as a result of, but I want confidence. I'm going to be able to carry my groceries up the stairs and be able to go for a run. I can go on a hike uphill and downhill. I can take a car ride four hours to the hike without having to stop every hour to get out and stretch and walk around. Yeah, completely. And it was also big for me now that we're talking about it more, you know, even though the conversation was a few years ago with Larry, um, you know, I haven't realized how even daily habits had become kind of toxic, Mm -hmm. like breath work, Mm -hmm. you know, nasal breathing, all of these things that, I did not know would come with, with working with Larry. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, working out is usually about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, if I include my walk a day. And all of these other habits needed to be changed also in my life. Well, and that's where I think, that's where I want to go next. I, I believe that that's what separates a trainer or a coach from a professional. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> A trainer or a coach, I believe, is thinking about what happens during that workout. The best ones are thinking about why do you come in to work out and trying to apply that workout to you and give you something to to latch onto so you can remember after. Mm -hmm. Professionals 
who I believe are on a completely different level than, than the people I just described, are making sure it does that. So the difference would be someone can say to you, hey, this workout's really hard. When you get through it, I want you to remember that you can do hard things. And a good coach can do that. A great professional after that, after that session will ask you questions like, can you think of areas in your life where this would apply? Mm-hmm. Yes, great. What are they? Awesome. So what are you going to do when you feel this stress again? How are you, how are you actually going to apply this breath work that you just learned to this stressful environment when I'm not there and has nothing to do with exercise? Mm-hmm. And then when you get it wrong, because you're going to get it wrong, you're going to be close. You're going to be right next to it. They say, that was good. I want you to think of it this way. Do you see how that's a little bit different and completely different? Yes. Great. Tell me again. Yeah. And they keep going through that until you actually have the education. Mm -hmm. Do you follow the difference there? Yes, absolutely. And Go ahead. Yeah. And I think that's exactly, that's also an (laughs) element of what I wish I had known years ago or understood that there's so many more components to really which was what was a huge issue for me was low adverse capacity and stress response. Can you explain? So you know what it is because you've been taught it now. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to other people in your own words what that looks like? So I'm envisioning and what we go through whenever I'm trying to sort out stresses and why I'm certain feeling a certain way. Um, I draw a line at the top of a board and that's my capacity. Mm-hmm. Right. And everything underneath is your load. So, you know, in my case, work and stress might be a very high load, you know, personal stress, this, that. Um, and you really should ideally be, I would think, under way under that capacity line. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when people like myself have struggled with depression and anxiety and pain, especially um, or did, You'll ex- your load will exceed your capacity, and that's when it becomes really troublesome. So you learned about how to maintain a capacity that exceeds your load from Larry. Mm-hmm. And then this is a really good example of where I think a professional does something different than a coach or a trainer, mm-hmm. even the best of them. Yeah. You mentioned work and stress in the same sentence. Yes. And I remember the day that you came in and you would quit your job. Yeah. And you were about to take a new one. Mm -hmm. You didn't have the new offer yet. You had just left the other one and it was like, okay, well, we'll see what comes next. I believe, I believed at the time that a big reason why you decided to quit that job and actually took the action was because of the training you were doing with Larry between the ears. Yes. Not the, not the exercise. Yes. And I asked you how much, or I said, do you believe that you quitting your job is in any way attributable to the training you've been doing with Larry? And you said, definitely, a hundred percent. I want to know how you quitting your job comes as a result of you training with Larry. I think that I can answer that in so many ways, but a big part of it, was him teaching me the concept of load versus capacity. Mm -hmm. And we went through it together on the whiteboard. And he was like, this, you know, work was huge. I was coming in on the brink of tears every day. You know, actually, I'll be completely transparent. My anxiety was so bad, I couldn't drive at night on my own. Like, my husband would drop me off here. Mm -hmm. Um, And I learned that through, that I needed to make that change now because... Simply put, Larry showed me, like, listen, this is what's happening with your with your loads right now. Did he talk about work specifically? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was like, how can you make this better? How can you reduce your stress? And mm-hmm. I was like, I have to find a new job. After 10 years, I have to find a new job. Was that itself stressful for you or was coming to that realization relaxing for you? In the moment, it was really relaxing. Like, as I think about it, I take... A huge breath. Um, But the process was stressful, of course. Mm -hmm. But it was also really freeing. Mm -hmm. Um, It was quite simply like a leap of faith that I needed to take. Sure. Um, 
but also a lot of the work that I had been doing with Larry at the time too, I believe physical movement does improve your stress response in a lot of ways. Sure. And I respond really well to that. So, you know, through some of the techniques he was teaching me at the time and just, I mean, we were working from the ground up, you know, Mm -hmm. inner ankle bones high, just like the concepts I had never heard of before Mm -hmm. from your feet up. Um, And that groundwork really honestly grounded me. Well, one of the things I want to be able to try to parse out here Mm -hmm. is I have a a principle that I like to hold us as a company really accountable to. And that is there are a lot of people who we can help. There are far fewer people who were very likely to help. Mm -hmm. Right. So can we help you get stage ready for a bodybuilding show? Yeah. Are we very likely to be your best resource to get stage ready for a bodybuilding show? No unequivocally no. And so we would not take that client. Mm -hmm. We would find somebody who that client should work with if they came to us. Um, you want to lose 30 pounds. Why do you want to lose 30 pounds? I just want to get back to my college weight. Can we help you do that? Yeah. Are we highly likely to do that in a world-class way? If it's not something that is bigger than just getting back to a college weight for the sake of getting back to a college weight? No. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we wouldn't take that client either. We would take that client if they said, look, I, I want to get back to a body that makes me comfortable taking my T-shirt off at the beach so that when I bring my kid with me in the summertime, they can see that mommy is proud of the way that she looks and feels, <clears throat> and I can be the example for my kid. Mm-hmm. That's an anchor that we can tie to, and that's an anchor that we would work with. I think too often people hear uh, stories about the person who it was possible for getting the thing that it was possible for them to get. And then the business who helped that person get that thing uses that outlier as the advertising piece. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, uh, a group fitness business saying this person quit their job, fixed their relationship with their, their husband, changed their relationship with food, uh, moved all of the things that, that we'll get into you having done. And it was all a result of our group fitness model. And then what I, what I will typically say to that is, yeah, it might be. The question is, are you really confident that if your, if your business was full of people like that, that they would all get similar results? Mm -hmm. And if it is, if you are, is that not far more valuable than helping people just acquire fitness for the sake of fitness. And if you agree it is, why isn't that the only thing that you focus on driving into your business? And I think that it all boils down to because it's possible for people, but not likely Mm -hmm. here. If that's not happening, we've failed. Yeah. Follow. Mm -hmm. So what else changed for you outside of your back doesn't hurt anymore and you feel more physically fit and you like the way you look better? Um, what else changed for me? Like physical shifts in my life left my job. We sold our house and we finally, my husband and I made the decision to take a move, really move across the country, you know, at some time this year, this year. Yes. Good thing we got you in before you leave. I know. Where are you going to go? Um, somewhere on the West coast. Mm -hmm. We tried out Colorado. We went there a few times. Next is Utah, Washington state and Idaho. Very cool. So it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, scary. But um, for the first time in my life, I'm the uncertainty. The uncertainty seems more exciting Mm -hmm. than it does scary. Yeah. Yeah. So did your, did the people who you hang out with change? No. Okay. Did the way that you interact with the people you hang out with change or is that all the same too? Um, Yes. In fact, I, yes, I think I understand what boundaries are now on, on my end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do things more for myself Mm -hmm. to protect my peace. Mm -hmm. Like what? Um, like saying no to doing too many social things. Okay. More often than maybe people like, Mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that now it feels good to be doing what I want to do and to have the confidence to do so 
because it all boils down to, again, I'm trying to just keep my load versus capacity, like those loads in check. So if, if I'm listening to this and I'm a skeptic, what I'm saying is, well, it sounds like you've just decided to limit your life somewhere else. So now, yeah, great. You can go for a run, but you're limiting it over here. How is what you're doing the opposite of limiting? And how is, so, so maybe a better way to ask it is how is saying no to something saying yes to you? I think that's like, you know, some people really could look at this as me, yes, me limiting. But in my case, it's actually freeing up a ton of space for myself Mm -hmm. because I'm spending time by myself or with my husband and doing things on my own instead of just saying yes to something that I really don't want to do. You know, I think it's for some people it might be, you know, they are going out more and adding more to their life by limiting myself in these areas. I'm actually adding more to my life. If that makes sense. It does. Cause what, what I heard you say before was basically that you were living a very reactive life. Yeah, exactly. And now mm-hmm. you're making conscious decisions about, do I want to do that? Yeah. In Intentional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people are not used to the reason. I think one of the reasons why you described what we do and what Larry does as different than personal training and wanting to avoid using that term is because it's so fundamentally different. Even if watching it on a, uh, on a time-lapse video that goes super fast, it would look the same. Mm -hmm. One of the elements that I believe is so different about it is, Oh, I didn't realize you didn't understand that. Let's stop exercising. Let's go to the whiteboard. Let's break it down. This could take two minutes. It could take 20. Yep. Right. The first time that that happened in the session, were you, how, how did it feel to be like, wait, we're, so we're not like, I'm not going to lift weights right now. I'm not going to move my body. I'm going to watch you teach at a whiteboard. How, how, how was that? At first, I think I was, I kind of felt like a different person at that time. If I'm looking back to that moment, because at first, probably my reaction was like, but I just want to sweat and like, you know, have a great workout. Right. Mm-hmm. But as he start, as Larry would go through things and the, it, it would sink in with me deeper and deeper. Um, it, that part of my first reaction to want to be like, no, I want to work out to just like look a certain way now. And if I don't get that workout in, in the 60 minutes, that's how it felt in the past. Mm-hmm. So it was a hard concept to swallow at first. Mm-hmm. And then as I started, as he started to practice it more and more, I thoroughly enjoyed it over chasing that instinct to want to just like lift a ton of weight and then like feel like shit after. Why? Why do you think the whiteboard stuff became so valuable to you? Because I was able to go to the gym and walk in, a, walk into the gym with confidence. You're talking about not here. You're talking about yes. When you I'm sorry. Out. After okay. the after he would teach me certain concepts, like the first thing that I don't know if I I can go into specifics if you want, but I remember one principle that he taught me, and I took it to the gym. What and, was it? Um, the concept of uh, drop ins and holds. Okay. Um kind of preparing yourself really I didn't realize that that realize it at the time but that movement was to prepare me to like move forward in space and building the foundation to be able to be strong to do so Mm -hmm. um so after he taught me that and it sunk in I would go to the gym and just play with it not like be structured and lift weights like an hour and a half would go by of me just doing these like fun movements that I learned with Larry on the whiteboard what's an example of one of those um, for me, it was drop-ins and holds. Um, all of, honestly, calf work was really fun for me. What, what is a drop-in and a hold is what I mean. Um, do you want me to just show? Or sure. Like, you, is it you, like, you, you can show and I'll describe It's kind of like, it. you know, getting ready for your first step in running. Got it. So, so, it's, so it's like taking postural positions. Exactly. And, and staying there for a moment. Yes. Okay. And getting strong in those positions. Is the purpose, so getting strong in them, is, is the strength coming from adding additional weight or is the strength coming from understanding proprioceptively, this is where I'm supposed to be? Understanding where you're supposed to be. I didn't use weight at all for a long time in those positions. Mm-hmm. And did it, why did that feel like play and not like minutia? Um, because I was actually learning and feeling my body and understanding the connection Mm -hmm. 
more than so than ever before instead of just like picking things up and putting them down without knowledge. Did you ever have to have conversations with Larry early on where you were like, look, this stuff is really great. And we've now worked out seven, eight, ten times together. And I feel like I haven't really worked very hard physically or sweat very hard physically in the last ten sessions. Did anything like that ever come up? Never. Because even if I was doing balancing or we were the first time we practiced the same concept I just told you, I was still sweating. Mm -hmm. I was still exhausted at the end of a session. There was never that, even if there was time where he took five minutes to explain something in a whiteboard, you know, we got right back into the intentional movement and I was still exhausted after Mm -hmm. because these were, I was working different parts of my body that I've never worked before in a sense. Right. Or or, or working the same ones in a different way that they've never been asked to work. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. What, what was the moment, do you remember, when Matt, your husband, noticed something different in you? It was easily, you know, probably four or five weeks after Larry and I had started working together. Do you remember what he said? Do you remember what, what the moment was? You look different in the gym. Okay. You look confident. That's cool. Something along those lines. Because I would be, you know, at the time we were living at our old um, town, ta- in Beth page and we were going to a different gym. Um, waking up at 5 AM every day sometimes could be really hard cause I was still at my old job and my energy felt different. I would go to the cable machines and play around and like put on crazy music and still have a great workout and just feel confident, like more confident than ever. Right. You didn't have to get four by eight in. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would still hit the markers we wanted to hit in order to just, you know, whether it was like X amount of calf raises or like, you know, um, ball slams, playing around with power, things that I had never done before. Did it feel weird for you given that what you were probably doing in the gym didn't look anything like what most people would be doing in the gym? You know, you weren't going on a circuit. It wasn't from the leg press to the lat pull down to the whatever. Um, honestly, I think I felt so good doing it. And because I understood what I was doing, I really didn't care. In fact, I liked it. I didn't like that I was going over to like the, the crowded machines and doing the same movements. How long after you started working with Larry would you say that you had complete resolution of everything you came to him for? Not everything that you want. Everything that you thought you wanted when you came. Um, it did not take very long. It probably was like three months because outside of the work I was doing with Larry, there were changes I had to make on my own. Like nutrition, Mm -hmm. you know, sleep, diet, stress was huge. So we started working on those right away. Was Larry helping you with your nutrition? No, I, he did recommend a really wonderful company. Mm -hmm. Um, who was it? Level 10. Oh, very nice. I actually still work with them. That's great. Yeah. Joelle's a friend. She'll be here in two weeks, I think. Yeah. I, I love my, uh, nutritionist. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really did take a few months for those hat, like if, I want to say six to eight weeks for those habits to, for me to continue. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's when I started noticing the physical changes and it wasn't weight that I wasn't paying attention to the scale. It was the body competition composition that changed for me. What, what was your take when Larry said, "Uh, you need help with nutrition? I'm yes, I'm coaching you here in the gym, um, but I'm not the person who should help you with nutrition. Did your mind go, just tell me where your mind went. I think my first instinct was like, wow, that's really cool. He can just like tell me straight up what he's thinking and like what he offers um, and what he thinks will best serve me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that makes sense to me. I I didn't come to him for nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So it was also like another, you know, the way he, honestly, the way that he handles himself and conducts, you know, business is really, I've looked at myself at the mirror and been like, okay, well it's healthy to establish (laughs) boundaries and say no for some reasons. Have you done, have you, have you actually done that somewhere in your life outside of here? Yeah. Where? Um, when I left my old job, Mm -hmm. you know, there was this, um, 
I wanted to go back to help, reactive response to like go back to help them and like continue to people please and say yes if they needed me to come in and do all of this. Um, in fact, I gave my two week notice was actually like four or five weeks mm -hmm. because I just wanted to say yes and continue to help them as much as I could. Mm -hmm. After I left and there has been times where like they've asked me to help out, you know, um, I really have, I put a limit on that because my time is really valuable and I, I don't work for you anymore. Right. I think a few months prior to that, I would have said yes and been trying to balance my new career and please my old company as well. What I think is so valuable there is I don't know if that came as a result of you and Larry talking about boundaries or if it came as a result of you modeling the boundaries that Larry set with you as the person you were employing basically, mm -hmm. right? Like Larry works for you when you hire him to be mm -hmm. this, this person for you. And seeing the way that he carried himself in his business gave you the opportunity to reflect on how I like being treated this way as a client. How am I out of alignment with this in my professional life and where can I fix it? Yeah. I think you deserve a lot of credit for seeing that and making that connection and then actually taking the action on it. So, I don't even think I realized I was doing it at the time. I think I was just saying, wow, that's really cool and interesting how he conducts business. Mm -hmm. And really, I was took a step back, I think, a few weeks after we started working together. And I was like, he's really a role model for me, like mm -hmm. a mentor in a lot of ways. I just didn't know what the word for it was at the time. Well, one of our core values at the flagship down the block is positive social influence. Mm hmm and the idea of positive social influence is that you're passing that influence that Larry is passing on to you onto other people. And so you seeing the boundaries he sets, you seeing the way that he educates you as being valuable, then going ahead and saying, I'm going to do this with my coworkers. I'm going to do this with my employer. I'm going to do this with my clients. There's a very real chance that you are now teaching them how to do the same thing, whether you realize it or not. Hmm. And so that ripple effect starts to become the, well, how do we influence the people who have the most influence? Because if we can do that, those people can change the lives of everybody who work with them, everybody who they know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like um, I have friends who are very successful and I have friends who are less successful. I'm strictly talking about financial. Okay. I don't have to ask the friends who are more successfully financially what they're doing to see what they're doing and decide, is that how I want to be successful financially or not? Then I have friends who I believe are very successful as parents and friends who I believe are less successful as parents. And I don't have to ask them, what would you do in this situation to know this is what they would probably do in the situation. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing is I know I can ask and I'll get a real answer. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think, um, one of the things that I've actually struggled with myself is our services are not readily affordable for everybody. We are not Amazon, right? This is not the, you find it lower, we'll match it. Although we could because no one's doing it. Um, and I've struggled with that because I want to make sure that everybody has access to this. And what, what helps me sleep at night is that I believe we influence some of the most influential people. And that as a result of the way that we treat them, they start to treat other people differently. And so in a lot of ways, we are servicing many more people than the people we service directly. Yeah. Speaking to that, your husband ended up being a client of Larry. Mm -hmm. Was that as a result of Larry saying, I really think you should bring your husband in 17,000 times? Absolutely not. How did that happen? <laughs> um, that happened because Matt was in a similar similar position to how, what I was in, right? He had an ongoing injury and didn't know what to do and was kind of in this, I guess, merry-go-round kind of course of action with movement and the gym. Um, and he has a really physical job, so... What does he do? He's a fleet mechanic. Okay. Yeah. So I don't that know what that means, but it sounds like he's he under works, heavy objects and moving around. Exactly. Lots of moving and climbing and things like that. Um, so he's really active. And I think I like to think too that Matt working with Larry was a result because he truly saw the difference that Larry made in my life, mm -hmm. you know, physically and mentally. Um, and was like, this person is really incredible. 
and mm-hmm. I want to also try to work with them. Did he start asking you questions at home? I don't really remember. I think it might, it was probably a little bit of back and forth and maybe that's when like the gear started turning in his head that maybe this would be an option for me to, to rehab my shoulder. Um, him, his shoulder. Yes. His shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember if he asked me specific questions, but at one point he was like, okay, I'm ready to have a conversation with Larry. Do you see, uh, social changes in him the way that he saw them in you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable sharing any of them? Yeah. Um, I see just, he's just much more outgoing in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a few new friendships that I see are very valuable to him and myself. And now when he's in these new social environments, it's just, it's just different. Mm -hmm. It feels like he's more confident. Um, I like how you smile when you talk about this. Yeah. Cause it makes me really happy. Mm-hmm. It makes me really happy. It's cool. It's, it's, it's again, it's the, it, that stuff has to happen on purpose. Yeah. It can happen by accident, but if it happens by accident, great. When it happens on purpose and it becomes a part of the focus of the person who is providing you with the service that, that they don't feel as though they are done until these things have happened. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different game. It's a totally different experience for you. I'll share um, a random example that may not seem like it's directly parallel, but I think is. Before we opened the flagship, before we even started construction, one of the things that I did was I asked about 100 people who I know have gone to the gym and don't go to the gym. Why did you stop? And I got a lot of different answers from a lot of people the number one answer that was most consistent about why are you uncomfortable in a gym setting was I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I don't, I I always felt like I was in somebody's way and I felt like I was kind of like intruding on other people's space and it just, it gave me anxiety. And so I just stopped going. And so before we built out the flagship, we mapped out a way for people to know if you are walking in this area, you are in the correct place. So it's a tile floor where obviously there's no training happening. And then once it hits the rubber, we put a beam of light overhead that marks off a figurative hallway. And the idea was when you're here, you always know where you're supposed to be in space. And that was a way for us to intentionally meet people where we felt like they would be if they were coming to us as a client. Mm -hmm. I'm curious your thoughts on how professionals in any space can do a better job of meeting their clients, their colleagues, their friends, where they are as opposed to what's most comfortable for them? Hmm. I think the space that you've built is perfect, but for other people who don't have that beautiful space, um, the first thing that came to mind for me was like eye contact and engaging. Like even if you're in a crowded room with someone, there's a way to keep their focus Mm -hmm. so that they're not feeling overwhelmed by everything else in their environment. Mm -hmm. Um, eye contact and is, is huge, was huge for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if that's helpful and makes sense. That's the, the first thing that came to mind for me and also providing being super clear with your communication. I forget the podcast I heard it on, but it was, it was a married couple and Mm -hmm. the, husband was actually describing his wife as the calm place no matter where they are right things can be chaotic things can be loud things can be whatever when he sees his wife he's calm because she's calm Mm -hmm. and so i think that's kind of what you're describing there is i see that person that person sees me i'm safe right kind of like um the concept of mirroring behavior like when I come in and I am super, if I'm having had a bad day and I'm scattered and, you know, Larry is always really calm, right? Mm-hmm. His demeanor. And he just like takes a breath and he's like, and then I'm like, okay. And it kind of just like, it really brings you back to focus. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I think about too. Is just mirror, like if you, if the trainer is calm and clear and direct and makes eye contact, I really believe that the client will feel comfortable and that environment with them and feel safe. Have you told friends about the changes that you've experienced? What do they say? Um, I have two really close friends that I've shared. And I mean, 
you know, they too are like, listen, I want to work with active life. And those mm-hmm. just conversations I haven't had with Larry yet, um, whether it works for their schedule or, you know, or not, they are just super intrigued. Mm-hmm. Um, they would too kind of struggle with pain or, you know, confidence in different areas and would like to be able to do things physically that they're not able to do right now. And why wouldn't they be a fit to just join Hollywood, for example, the big gym in town or the CrossFit gym in town or the, the, the women's strength gym down the block? Why is that not going to do the job for them? Um, because they've, they've been there so many times. Been where? To those commercial gyms. And mm-hmm. they, like you, like you had said, kind of like I did too, they walk around not really knowing what to do or they fall into, you know, a, movement workout program for a little bit and then fall out of it because there's so many other component components that have to be that have to shift in order for that to happen like what sleep diet and stress and why do you think that is unlikely to happen in like let's say a boutique group training environment um because the foundation and the education isn't there Mm mm-hmm you're not being educated in a group class the same way that you are at all with active life, if that makes sense. It does. What I think is important is that the reason why that's true is because the education is not a blanket. Mm -hmm. The education, when we talk about load versus capacity with a client, which is the thing that you've said was the most um, pivotal talk you got, it has to be about your loads and your capacity and your agency to change them, not general loads, general capacities, and general agency to change them. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is you can look at, well, my job is the biggest stressor. And if we look at my wife, she doesn't have a job. Mm-hmm. So her job is not her biggest stressor. And so now the things that we would talk about if we were in a big group, if I said, so whatever your biggest stressor is, whether it's your job, being a parent, being a daughter, whatever it might be, this is how you overcome it. Well, no, that's not true because the way that you overcome the stress of being in a job, of being a parent, of being a child, what, you know, the, the child, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a family leader, whatever you want to call it. They're very different. Mm -hmm. And then the way that you would become in control of your own environment at work is different than the way that I would become in charge of my environment at work because you have someone you're reporting to. I have someone different I'm reporting to. Mm -hmm. And the way that they want to be spoken to is different. So the education needs to be highly specific. Mm -hmm. When you started with Larry, you were looking to have your back feel better. You wanted some aesthetic changes. And that was basically the goal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now that you've had those things happen and you've had all the other social emotional things that we discussed happen, Mm -hmm. how would you weigh them in regards to importance? So when I asked that, the things you expected, the things you got that you had no idea could happen, how do they weigh against each other? I mean, the things that I had no idea could happen Ex- far exceed the aesthetic stuff that I, I kind of knew would happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I could really even put a value to it. It's just, I think my whole, my entire stress response has changed since working with Larry. Mm-hmm. It's still a work in progress and I'm still working on it, you know, every day, but that's what I take and I carry with me out of everything that he's taught me is, you know, stress response through the breath work that he's taught me, all the teachings on the whiteboard, even through movement. You know, some days I really de- need to produce power and take up more space in a room. And I didn't know how to do that because I felt like a little shell mouse mm-hmm. of a girl. And he's like, be fucking powerful. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if I'm allowed to curse on you. You're allowed to curse. Okay like take up space. And I'm like, hell yeah. Like, why was I not doing this? This feels so good. Mm -hmm. That stuff is so much more valuable to me than losing the 10, five, 10 pounds that maybe I was consumed with trying to lose a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. And the reason I think it's so important is I believe that if your goals were what your goals were and Larry met them, you'd be done working with him now. Mm-hmm. 
And not, not because like, not because he did anything wrong, but because he did exactly what you expected and you got exactly what you wanted. And there was no goal after the goal. I also think that the way it's happened has been a result of Larry simply wanting to serve you in the way that he would want somebody to serve someone he loves. Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking, how do I, what are the retention tactics so that Clarissa stays a client? I believe he's just thought about what does Clarissa need? Yeah. And that ends up being the retention tactic, the referral tactic, all of it. I mean, I truly believe that he cares about me being successful in life. Mm -hmm. That is just about the long haul of life and having enjoying and having an enjoying life. I mean, there are conversations that we've had during our workouts that are just so valuable to me. Like, what are some fun things that you're going to do this mm -hmm. week? I'm like, well, I'm going to go for my walk. He's like, no, do something fun. Mm -hmm. And that just is like, it just makes me smile thinking about it. Cause I'm like, okay, you know, and then you start to give yourself permission to have mm -hmm. more fun and add some fluidity in your life. Yeah. I believe that when you move West, wherever it is that you move West, you and Larry will retain a relationship professional or otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think that only happens when something profound has occurred in your life as a result of a relationship. Otherwise they're too flimsy. It's too easy to let something go because it's not that important. Yeah. I mean, even at whatever capacity it is, if he has space to still work for me to work for me to work with him, I would, I want to continue to do that because mm -hmm. I'm learning. I mean, we could work together six days a week and there would always be something new to learn mm -hmm. um, and for me to absorb. Well, he's dedicated his life to the craft. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, every day if he's pouring an hour plus into you, he's pouring 12 into himself yes. to be better at it. Yeah. Yeah. Clarissa, is there anything else that you think is valuable for the audience to hear or do you think we covered it? No, I think I think we covered so much. I mean, I would just say, you know, I was in a place a year and a half ago where change was essential. And active life has more than, I could get emotional talking about it, has put me in a place where I'm making physical and mental changes I've never, ever been able to make before. Why does it make you emotional to think about it? Um, because I believe in myself now hmm. and I didn't, I didn't believe in myself a year and a half ago. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the active live podcast. Please remember, give us a hand, rate it, review it wherever you listen to shows. We are on a mission to humanize the healthcare industry by professionalizing the fitness industry to empower the individual to live a life unlimited by the way that their body looks, feels, or performs. If you are inspired by that mission and want to jump on the wagon, find us anywhere. Active Life Professional on Instagram. Active Life Rx on Instagram. Come to me personally at Dr. Sean Pastuch. We want to welcome you onto the train. We want you to be a part of the mission. We want to offer you the opportunity to pursue this right alongside us. We're inspired by your effort and we hope to help you in your journey. Turn bro.